Hey guys, Kiko here for another Q&A. Today is a day off, so I'm taking the time to read the comments, to read the questions. So keep sending questions, I'm, I will do my best to answer them. And uh, subscribe to the channel, right? And uh, here we go. The first question is from David Goodship. Do you guys have a pre-show ritual before you hit the stage? Fist bump, chat about set list, make sure you're all feeling good. Yes, of course, yes. But so, so let me give you a full answer for that. So we on this tour, right? On this tour, we start the day doing the sound check around 1.30 p.m., right? So before we might eat, we are there already at the venue, so we might have lunch. Then 1.30, around 1.30 p.m., everything's set up. We have an amazing crew, so they everything is ready, actually is ready for the show. But we do like to go on stage and check, um, you know, to fine tune things. So we do have a protocol in order to, to do stuff, you know, the sound check. So check, check the drums, drums and bass, you know, drum bass and guitar, then Dave's guitar. I check my acoustic guitar because we're playing Conquer or Die. Uh, what else? Uh, we check our in-ears, volumes, and how it feels. Um, also then the PA, you know. So then, of course, Stanley, our front of house, opens the PA so he can feel the sound of the room. And we also check the time code for the videos, if everything is running, you know. Um, yeah, so basically we do that playing Symphony of Destruction, you know, just the chorus, several times, maybe four or five times. And then we play a song. It, it might be any song. So every every day we choose a different song to go over and check if it feels the stage is correct, PA is correct, time code is correct, the videos, the lights, everything is working. And then uh, we're good to go. And then this, this might take 30 minutes max, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I never really count it, but it's pretty fast actually. And it's fun, you know, it's fun doing the sound check. I was never a big fan of sound check, to be honest, but you know, it's so fast and so uh, precise and professional that it's good, you know, it feels good doing it. Um, so after, after the sound check, we kind of have, you know, you know, one hour and a half break so we can eat again <laughs> basically because you know uh, we have the catering we have our dressing room full of food and then we are there inside this room so it's like uh, you know just you know <laughs> we, we eat a lot actually on tour um, so then 3 30 around this time we do the uh, meet and greet or q a we're doing like a, a q a because of the social distancing um, so we're doing a q a and answering the questions uh, from the fans there uh, it's pretty cool. It's a very cool moment, and uh, it might take I don't know 45 minutes. And I don't know. It's, it feels fast because it's super cool. We took we take some pictures, and then um, normally those big arenas, those big venues, you have to walk somewhere. You know, it always takes like 10, 15 minutes going to the place and coming back. Um, so then after that, uh, we can eat again. <laughs> but we do also sign posters and stuff for the VIP. Um, uh, package, right? So there's a lot of posters to sign every day. Uh, what else? And then, of course, then is the time to talk about the set list. And uh, uh, lately, me and, and James, we've been like playing a lot, jamming. You know, sometimes I'm playing guitar and he's playing bass, or I might be playing drums, or he's playing drums. And sometimes Dave or Dirk join us, um, just playing whatever, jamming. You know. Uh, being musicians, you know, it's fun, you know, not not playing mega death stuff, just like jamming, whatever uh, cool idea, you know. We never know, we never know, you, you know, a new riff can can um, can come out of those uh, jamming jams, right? Um, what else? So then the concert the, starts at 6 p.m. Hate Breed, then Trivium, then Lamb of God. So during the shows we. I might do some uh, stories on my Instagram. I might uh, do film some stuff. I will be posting more videos about the about the tour soon. You know, I just need some time to upload them and and edit. Uh, but uh, what else? And then we, of course, we watch a little bit of the shows. Um, you know, then we get dressed. You know, put our superhero not superheroes our outfit. You know, um, metal dudes outfit. Um, then we do like the proper warm-up, I would say like 
playing the songs, you know, maybe one or two songs, three songs, or sometimes I play the solos, um, you know, just go through some of the solos, and some normal, you know, warm-up exercises. Uh, MyGuitarHacks.com exercises, uh, my fellow friends from Guitar Hacks, they know what I'm talking about. So I go through a little bit of, uh, you know, some of the exercises. Sometimes I, I do the one hour um, Guitar Hacks uh, program, sometimes like half hour. Dirk does the same, some stretching as well. And then 9.45, we're on stage. So, yeah, so we do have the, the, the fist pump thing. We do have like a little, uh, fat, you know, a little pray, uh, praying there. Uh, a moment us uh, four alone on, uh, in the dressing room. Uh, and then we walk to the stage. Yeah, you know, and then we play this, play the show. Yeah. So yeah, that was a long answer for that, man. Sorry about this. I talk, I'm talking too much, as always. Um, Raziej. Ah, I don't know how to pronounce it. Raziej. All right. So I hope this was right. Raziej. Uh, question regarding technique. I noticed in some of your practice videos that you place your fingers very closely to the frets. Is this a result of practice or just happen, uh, happen to you naturally? It's not natural. The, the natural way is like just to, you know, to go away from the neck. You know, that's the first reaction, right? When you start moving your fingers. So yeah, you, you do need to practice, practice a lot to keep your fingers close to the neck. I did a video here. I had to find a video. I might put it here. You know, I did a video about that. Um, keep keep your fingers close to the, to, the, uh, to the neck, right? Yeah, so I do have the Guitar Hacks uh, program, like exercises to keep very close to the neck. I think it's, it looks great. I think it's beautiful when the, the player, um, you know, seems like it's playing like uh, with no effort, right? But also I think the, the minimal movement is very important for, for you to be more precise, to play faster, you know, to have more accuracy and all that, you know, so that's what I believe. So I've been playing and um, practicing a lot of that, right? So that's your question. So there's no natural, oh, the guy was born playing guitar, like, <laughs> no. It's a lot of hours practicing and, uh, you know, uh, trying to be to perfect the, the movement. All right, good stuff. Um, Free Bridge, I like your name, Free Bridge. Um, Kiko, any tips and tricks for quickly restringing a guitar with a floating tremolo? Um, the show from Arizona was amazing. Yeah, it was a very cool. Man. Yeah, yeah, it was a cool show there, uh, Phoenix. So, restringing the, f I know, I know, I remember the first time I was uh, changing my strings <laughs> because I used to have an SG, you know, and then I, I, I bought a RG 550 Ibanez and then the, the first time I tried to change the strings the, the way you would do on an SG, you know, um, it's completely uh, uh, chaos, you know. So, the, of course, I don't have the guitar here to show you if maybe it's a great idea let me know here in the comments if it's a great idea to show you myself or uh, me and kitten uh, my guitar tag uh, we can show you guys how to change the string i changed maybe in, in around 10 12 minutes you know i would say but the the main thing would be a, su a suggestion here suggestion not the main thing but a suggestion would be just change once get the sixth string change it put the new one and tune the guitar and to tune all the six strings you know so it's the floating bridge is there in the right place and then you change another string put a new one and change and tune all the six strings again you know you don't need to be super precise on the tuning but just keep very close to the to the tuning you want if it's D standard or standard tuning and then Keep changing uh, each str string at a time. Don't take all the strings off and then try to put new strings because this is gonna be chaos. So one string, tune all the guitar. Next string, tune all the guitar. And do it like this. It, it might be, it, it might sound that it takes more time, but it's, I think it's faster. And then 
the, the, bridge, the bridge will always be there floating in the right place. Right? That's my suggestion for you guys. So it's not a big deal, not a big deal at all. The next one here from KOM Gin Boyle. That's a difficult name to pronounce. That's even harder than Loredo, right? <laughs> oh, by the way, the other day I was teaching James, James Lomenzo, how to pronounce my name because he was not, you know, as 100% um, of the Americans, they don't know how to pronounce my name or they are like always shy to, hey Kiko, you know, I don't know how to pronounce your name. No problem because there's a lot of names that I, I have a hard time to pronounce as well, so there's no problem. So here, here is my, my answer, you know, for my friend uh, J-Lo, because we, now it's like K-Lo and J-Lo, James Lomenzo and Kiko Loureiro. But uh, for the Americans here, so picture Lou Reed, you know Lou Reed, right? The singer, picture Lou Reed, right? Now Ray Charles, you know him, right? Ray Char can can be Ray Luzier as well, um, yeah, you know, great drummer from Korn. So Lou Reed, uh, Ray Charles, and Rowing, Row, Row, right? Yes. So Lou, Ray, Row. That's it. Very simple. So now it's done. So that that's the way I explain people you know, mainly Americans, how to pronounce my name. Of course, it's how to pronounce my name with an American accent, you know, just to be sure, um, to be clear here, right? With an American accent. Uh, otherwise, it would be Lureiro. I had to roll the R, but that's another difficult step. That's like a, you know, that's a master degree of <laughs> how, to, how to pronounce my name. Uh, yeah, Portuguese people, you know. So, Lu, Ray, Ro. Here we go. So, but let me ask, answer this question for our friend here, Boyle. I'm 19 years old and uh, in a band, but for some reason I feel like I'm too old. And we only get older. Well, guess, guess what? Me too. Uh, and my time has passed to make it. What does that mean to make it? I kind of wish I was just a bit younger. Um, I know this all probably sounds silly. It's not silly, man. Actually, there was another answer here um, from another guy with like a super difficult name as well, Vic Tria, um, saying the same thing. The guy is also um, 19. Um, I, I think it's a guy, I even don't know. Vic Tria, maybe it's Victoria. Um, okay, so yeah. I mean, I understand, you know, when I was 19, I was already kind of a professional player. Um, I was doing the demos for, for Angra, and I recorded my first album when I was 21, and I did my first instructional video in Portuguese when I was 19. You can find some videos uh, of me playing when I was 19, but it doesn't mean anything. I, I started when I was 11, but I really started practicing seriously when I was 15, I guess. 15, 16, so like in three years I was able to play the solos uh, and, and you know be part, part in the band and uh, later, a few years later, record my first album. I mean, it doesn't matter. Think about the longevity you have for your career and playing music is not a competition. You don't need to be ahead of anybody else. You just have to feel that you're improving every day. That's the main thing you have to focus. Like I'm. Are you improving every day? Are you playing better than yesterday and worse than tomorrow? That's the only thing you have to think about. And uh, in three years, it's going to be great if you dedicate your life. I think the only difference, because of course, I started younger, so I don't have the, uh, all the resources to, to say how it would be um, if you start at age 19. But I think the main difference is when you get older, you have all the stuff, you have to pay bills, you have to start working, you know? And when you're younger, you might be still like living with your parents. Life is easier, it's just easier. So we have more free time, right? So I think that's the main difference. It's not about the age, it's more like how, how many hours do you have per day to, to, you know, to practice and to 
to rehearse with your uh, bandmates and things like that, you know. So don't, you know, you know what? Just Google and see like how the artists that started their career late or artists that started to play late and we will find a lot of great artists there. I don't know by heart, I, I think like uh, Joe Pass, the great uh, jazz guitarist, started pretty late. Uh, Sherry Crow, maybe I, I don't know, but just Google and you'll see it. You'll see it. So don't worry. Just uh, focus on, on practicing and uh, being a great musician. And music is going to be there for you your whole life until you are 100 years old. So two years, three years, it doesn't make any difference. All right. So I hope that was. A good answer. Um, what is your favorite solo from Temp of Shadows? Uh, from uh, Koyatsu. Koyatsu. You know what? Today I'm recording this uh, uh, September 6th. So I'm posting this tomorrow. And uh, today um, is the you know the uh, 17th anniversary of this album. I even posted a, a picture of the cover on my Instagram today. So yeah, it's an amazing album. Uh, um, the whole band, um, Edu, Achilles, Felipe, Rafael, and I were like very proud of this album. But above the solo, yeah, there's, you know, the great solos. But the thing that I'm, you know, proud of is the Gate 13th is the, la the last song. It's like an orchestral thing. And I, I was like, and I did, uh, it was my first time trying to do something only orchestral. And then I, I sat down uh, at the piano and uh, just got the melodies from all the songs. And uh, it was an idea from, uh, from Raphael, like, why don't you do something in the end that we collect all the melodies of the songs and put together. And then I sat down at the piano and tried to figure out how to put one melody from each song in the different keys and thinking about the, the transitions and stuff like that. Then I went to the to the Cubase and start uh, arranging with uh, orchestra instruments. Uh, it was pretty cool and, and I like the result I did back then, you know, like the, with the samples and stuff like that. You know, they're not so great. And we had the help from Miro, who was a guy that had all the great equipment. So I brought all the MIDI's. Uh, because I had, I had like not all the samples in this world, uh, so then he he made it sound even more realistic, I would say. And uh, yeah, so that's my solo that I'm proud of of uh, this album. But all the solos from all the songs, I think there uh, was a very inspire, inspired uh, album, and and not only for the solos for all the performance from Edu, Achilles, and Felipe, Rafael, and I. So yes. Another question here from Sunjoy Das. Have you taken your COVID vaccine? Yes, I did. Uh, two shots of Pfizer in Finland. And uh, of course, to, to be here uh, in the United States, doing this tour uh, was mandatory for everyone to have, uh, to be vaccinated, right? Also, also, I do believe in vaccine and I, do know like all this great stuff vaccine did for the humankind so yes i did uh, i did take the two shots of the pfizer vaccine and uh, yeah i remember my back in the days um, i did two years of biology university and i was super into uh, microbiology so for me this is like a no-brainer you know that's my point of view on that all right guys so Thanks a lot for all those questions. I, I will stop here because there are so many questions. Next week I will answer more. And uh, yeah, if you live in the US or Canada, come to the shows and see you in the next video. Bye.